Hello guys, we are talking about restriction enzyme. We have uh, seen the basics of restriction enzyme and also different types of restriction enzyme. We have talked about isocisomer, neocisomer and little bit about isocodomer. Now in this video we will be focusing on isocodomer after learning an important concept and some properties of restriction enzyme. So this video is uh, mainly about the properties of the restriction fragmentization and so let, let me write the properties of these restriction enzymes and the first important property of the restriction enzyme is the specificity they are very very specific for what they are doing so, so the job of uh, recognizing the signal sequence is a very crucial because it's the first step towards the cleavage of the DNA sequence right and for that it must attach to the specific signal sequence. It can only attach to the specific signal sequence if they maintain their specificity. Right? So this is the first important criteria. After that, what it will do, suppose this is the DNA sequence, this black region is the recognition sequence or RS and this red uh, thing is the restriction endonuclease or restriction enzyme, whatever you can say. Now after that, what we can see, it can cleave. Now it can cleave from this region, from somewhere else. But suppose it cleaves from this region. Now this cleavage can be of two different type. One is that after the cleavage, it can generate. Suppose here, let me look at. So here it is. It can generate sequences like that. Sorry. Or it can generate sequences like that so anyway if this is a single standard DNA uh, if this is a linear DNA not single standard obviously double standard if it's a linear DNA this restriction enzyme will hold on to it it will chop it now another very very important concept this restriction enzyme will never cleave a single standard DNA it will only cleave a double standard DNA so let me write it here it cleaves DS DNA only this is another important concept. Now, once it's recognized, it can cleave. Now, this after the cleavage, what it will generate? This is called fragments of DNA. So, let me write it. They are called DNA fragments, right? Now, the fragments that you have got after the cleavage using restriction in the nucleus are can be of two different types. One is of like this. So, for example, in this case, so here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let me draw it here like that. Like. So we can have this thing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. We can have this type of sequence after cleavage or we can have suppose this this part like that so what it means actually try to understand the concept so we can have this type of cleavage as a result what we get here you can see this black dots are telling the nucleotide sequences that are attached with each other via hydrogen bonds now here we can see for this terminal nucleotide sequence there is no nucleotide in this upper region. So it's a gap, right? So what it generates is something like that. Here is the single nucleotide sequence. So this is called sticky end. This is called sticky end. Because it's just like uh, one nucleotide is coming out and nucleotides are very very much eager to form bonds between other compatible nucleotides. So if it is a if it is an A, so it is having the tendency to find another T and to ligate it with T or make hydrogen bonds with T, right? So it's a kind of sticky. It's a kind of overhang that is generated here. So here it is. Overhang is generated in this case. In both these sections. So, if this is the DNA fragment, so let me draw it again for you. And if it cleaves in this way, it can generate one segment like that, another segment like that. If we separate them out, what it will look like? Something like this, like this, right? So, these regions are called overhangs or sticky ends 
as we have seen in this case this is a one type of fragment sticky fragments or overhang that can be generated after restrictions in the nucleus cleavage or what we can get is simply like that it's in this case if we are draw schematically we get one fragment like that one like that so simply we we never get a overhang instead what we get is a blunt end so in this case we call it a blunt end so either we can generate a sticky end or we can generate a blunt end now if we generate a sticky end you uh, now uh, you need to answer me the question is that if we generate sticky end which one is better for our ligation ligation means joining the nucleotide sequences the answer is obviously sticky end because as it is popping one nucleoside out so it can easily combine with other nucleotide and can form bond right so it can form the nucleotide uh, length in like that but for this blunt end you can also join blunt end but it is little bit more difficult to join okay so these are the two types of fragments that can be generated after the restriction site cleavage or restriction in the nucleus cleavage okay so here it is so there are very specific cleaves only dna so this cleavage can generate so remember so they are having a specificity uh, under the specificity we have talked about the restriction sequence and all these things so here it is they can generate sticky or blunt end they can generate both either sticky or blunt end okay so there are some restriction enzymes which always tend to generate this uh, sticky ends and there are some restriction enzymes always tend to generate this blunt ends so it depends upon our choice what kind of experiment we want to perform what kind of type of ligation we want to perform we will choose our restriction enzymes so there are a variety of restriction enzymes some restriction enzymes are four nucleotide uh, cutters some are six some are eight and depending upon this kind of uh, generation of blunt and stick blunt and sticky and there are also different variations so we get a plenty of different types of restriction enzymes available nowadays and guess for where to find those enzymes guess what catalog right so just find in our catalog and call them and they will deliver it to you and they are very very costly because uh, to purify them and make them ready for the available commercial purpose is very much difficult so they are very very costly also okay so these are the major uh, features of restriction enzyme and restriction enzyme mediated cleavage now we are going to see we will be seeing that how to use restriction enzymes for the purpose of simple cloning right so let us see now say so this is our for a cloning it's a, for this region let me tell you because i can't uh, make you understand cloning in this uh, one or two minutes it's very very tedious it's long lengthy process you i hope you understand cloning if you don't you just go back to my channel and start learning cloning okay now say here it is the dna segment so what is cloning in a gist so for the cloning you must need two different things one is uh, one is your desired dna which is to be called uh, cloned dna or gene whatever which is to be cloned second one is the, the vector on to which we will clone the dna right so second one is the vector so cloning is a very simple to explain but very difficult to perform that's what we all know then here it is say this is the desired dna this blue thing and your vector is here in red here it is your vector so what we'll do you need to cut the region on the vector and you'll insert the segment of your gene of interest inside the vector right so let's do it how can we cut a double stranded dna segment here comes the importance and application of restriction endonuclease so what we'll do we simply add these things add restriction enzymes onto the mix and what it will give us it will give us a vector we combined with the dna segment of our interest and this particular molecule this particular vector along with our dna sequence is called rtm or recombinant dna molecule recombinant dna molecule now once this recombinant dna is produced then the second step is to transform this or transfer this into a, a host cell the host could be a bacteria it could be eukaryotic cell depending upon our uh, choice or our 
type of experiment or what we need to find. Now we will insert it inside this host cell. So here it is the host. Inside the host cell, we'll be having the DNA uh, of gene of interest along with the vector. And obviously, the host cell will have definitely its own DNA segment. Definitely, it's having its own genome. Then we uh, allow this host to multiply and grow. Once the hosts start to grow, we'll take up this host and take the clone. Now, what do you mean by clone? This recombinant DNA molecule. Once we start to grow this host, from this one host, it will deliver us, suppose, 10 to the power 6 bacterial cell containing our desired gene. So, once, which is only one, this is uh, only one, uh, present in number one only, now it is giving us the number 10 to the power 6. So, what we do is simply propagate from 1 to million, 1 to 1000, lakh, million. This is called cloning from one to many of that same identical piece. So if this is our gene of interest, now this all of this 10 to the power 6 uh, DNA sequence with vector we've got, all of them are similar, identical. So they are cloned of each other. That's the basic goal of clone. And in this cloning you can see, very beginning of the experiment, we require our restriction enzyme activity. So for that reason, we need to purify restriction enzyme to apply them in different purposes. Okay, so that's uh, approximately uh, uh, gist about restriction enzyme functionality, and I hope it it is helpful for you. Thank you.